The following podcast is part of the Underdog Sports Podcast Network. For advertising information or to find more great podcasts, visit us at www.theunderdogsports.com and follow us on Twitter at RealTheUnderdog. What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of The Atlantic Files, the number one podcast and the number one division in the NBA, brought to you by the Underdog Sports Podcast Network. As always, joined by your trio of hosts, we have myself, Alex Fishbein, we have Mike Bash, we have Dennis Clausen. What's going on this week, fellas? Oh, we're good. Uh, Dennis just kicked my ass in fantasy football. And uh, now I have to play Alex. So uh, I'm in last place, but it's great. Everything else is good. I mean, I didn't just kick your ass. I just mopped the floor with you. He Derek Henry stiff-armed you. (laughs) Derek Henry. (laughs) It's okay. It's okay, Dennis. I mean, I beat you in the playoffs. You beat me in week two. Doesn't matter. That was last year. (laughs) I'll this see you in a new just, year. I just okay. want to say week one, I got best manager and lost. And in week two, I got worst manager and won. So that's how the computer it's going program. <laughs> it's a computer program. There's no doubt. True. They say they say they say machines are gonna take over the planet, but yet it's they're doing stuff like that. So we got nothing to worry about right now. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good point. But anyway, this week we are continuing our divisional preview series. We did the Northwest, we did the Southwest. So we're finishing off the Western Conference. We're moving on to the Pacific Division, which probably has been easily the most talked about division other than the Atlantic this offseason. Um, not only because of the Phoenix Suns making it to the NBA Finals, but obviously with the Lakers making moves, the Warriors getting healthy, the Clippers making moves, and also Sacramento potentially making a move. Um, So those are obviously the five teams in the Pacific, for those of you that don't know. Last year, they finished in Phoenix Suns in first, then the Clippers, Lakers, Warriors, Kings. Um, all four teams except the Kings made the playoffs. Well, the Golden State made the play in tournament, but they lost in there. Um, and obviously it was an uphill battle for the Lakers dealing with a lot of injuries, so on and so forth. So before we get to the Lakers and their big off season that they had, let's start with Phoenix who made it to the NBA finals. They were 51 and 21, made it to the finals when nobody really expected them to. They were the second seed in the West. What, like, what are your expectations for them coming into this season? And how much did they out, outplay your expectations from last season? Well, I think um, if, if you don't think they outplayed your expectations, you're just lying to yourself. I mean, nobody had them going to the NBA championship. And the, the only reason they made it to the NBA championship is because of the injuries and landmines they avoided on the way. Um, that's not taken away from them being a good team in the NBA or a good team in the Western Conference, but they were not the best team in the Western Conference last year. Uh, the Lakers lost, you know, guys to injury. And then I think, didn't they play the Nuggets? Who, who didn't have, I, I forgot their path, but I know like every team they played lost a guy. Um, and they Kawhi, the I think they too. played the Clippers. Yeah, they didn't have Kawhi, yeah. so it, it just you know the the stars aligned for Chris Paul to finally make an NBA championship. I was rooting for them. I thought when they were up two nothing, they were going to win and avenge the the Nets' loss to the Bucks, but they didn't. Um, they did bring in Landry Shamet though from the Nets, so I I like that pickup for them. And they re-signed Frank Kaminsky. To me, that's a perfect off season. You re-sign Frank Kaminsky and you and you trade for Landry Shamet. I've been wanting the Nets to do that for years, um, <laughs> but no, they obviously out they out, they took their momentum from the bubble where they went eight zero and they uh, translated that last year and made it to the uh, NBA Finals. So it was a great year for them, a great year for their fans. So just I don't I think that was their peak and they needed a lot to go right for them to get that to that spot. I agree. So, yeah, no, I, I definitely agree with Mike when he says that nobody expected the Suns to be anywhere near a finals 
team at all. Everybody was always the Lakers, the Lakers, the Clippers, the Clippers, you know, in nauseam. That's all that you heard over and over again throughout the entire year. Really what it came down to, though, is the Suns really had a chance to, to pull off the win in the NBA Finals. But, of course, Chris Paul, again, is dealing with injuries. He had shoulder problems throughout the postseason. He had a hand issue. Classic Chris Paul. The, the guy's got all the talent in the world. One of the best point guards to ever play the game. Durability-wise, this is exactly what you would expect that a Chris Paul had happened to him uh, when he was with Houston, when the, the Rockets had a chance to make the finals, uh, had that hamstring ailment. And now again, this postseason, they had all of the potential to actually beat the Bucs, who aren't really that good of a team. They're good enough. But I think this season we saw Giannis exposed more than he's ever been. So the Suns had a chance to win, but it didn't happen. Sure. They could have easily been the NBA champs right now. They demolished all the teams that they played in the postseason. They made short work of the Lakers for the most part, demolished the Nuggets. I mean, this so where we get to the finals and Chris Paul again is hurt, which now puts all the responsibility on Devin Booker, who is a fantastic player. However, he could have really used a healthy 100% healthy Chris Paul to take off some of the load and to help him guide through the playoffs. Yeah, no, I completely agree. The The thing I like, I've always been a fan of Chris Paul, even with all the people that like don't really like his attitude and all that kind of stuff. But it just sucks that the time he's unhealthiest is in the playoffs. Like during the season, he's usually fine. And then he'll have like some load management, things like that. He'll, he might have an injury raise out like a few games, whatever. But it's always the playoffs where he has something that really just derails his whole season. And it really sucks. And I really feel bad for the guy. I mean, I'm glad he finally got to get at least got to the NBA finals so he can get rid of that whole, you know, um, whatever the word is, uh, the whole curse. stigma stigma yes there we go um the whole stigma of him not being able to even get to the conference finals or anything so i'm glad he at least got that off his back but i agree with the fact that they they definitely outplayed everyone's expectations even phoenix suns fans even the most hopeful of phoenix suns fans they definitely exceeded expectations and i also agree with the fact that i don't necessarily think they were the best team in the western conference but they did just have everything aligned for them. And that's not. How are they away. not the best team in the Western conference? Who do you think is better than they were? I mean, I think the Lakers would have been if they were healthy. That's I, I just mean, if everyone was healthy, then I wouldn't have said they're the best team in the West. Well, if my, if my aunt had a, she'd be my uncle. <laughs> Means absolutely that, nothing. Oh no, you I can't, agree. You I'm, can't be saying that. You cannot be saying that what of what a should it what it all boils down to is they actually made the NBA finals. For sure. So Dennis, are you putting your uh life savings on the uh Phoenix Suns last year to take down the Brooklyn Nets? Are you talking about this upcoming season? No, oh, last year. The, the, no no way in hell a, a healthy Phoenix Suns could beat the a healthy Brooklyn Nets. Just okay. not possible. Well, all right. Are you taking a healthy Lakers over a healthy Suns or a healthy Suns over a healthy Lakers? I think that one is a is a toss up now because they I think they clearly weren't the best team in the West. What are you talking about? They got to the Western Conference Finals, but that doesn't mean they were the best team in the West. So who is better? The Lakers were f fully healthy. There's teams that were better. I don't want to hear the fully healthy stuff. A part of being a successful team is being durable. And on top of that, having guys who can actually stay on the floor the entire time. Thank God the Phoenix Suns had Cameron Payne. Thank God uh, Jay Crowder stepped up. Uh, they had so many players who just stepped up. Jay Crowder had so many fantastic games. Cameron Payne 
was was when he was playing and when he was starting it was fantastic but overall what it what it goes down to is they didn't they weren't healthy enough to to finish the job the bucks were oh barely, that's true because Giannis barely played so and he was hurt too yeah and uh, that's what I mean. I'm not taking anything away from them. They still were the healthiest. They still they still got to the finals. They still made their way through the Western Conference. It was just at the beginning of the season and all the way up until the playoffs, I didn't think they were the best team in the West. Once they got to the playoffs, people got hurt, whatever it is, they became the best in the West. But beforehand, I, I was not thinking they're going to win the Western Conference. Well, now we have, you know, throughout the entire – season we had people talking about utah and then all of a sudden you know utah classic utah just falls off the map because they don't know how to win in the playoffs the suns become a talk about team but now that the season's over now we can just start talking about the lakers and now it's going to be the lakers the lakers blah 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 and this is the worst part of the nba right here is going into the season now everybody's not going to shut up about the lakers lebron james blah 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 like uh you know what I mean? So this is the time of year. And now we're going to start talking about this crap and about how good the Lakers are going to be and things like that. So I hope that's the a, Suns do well. That's a good segue. So let's get into the Lakers. That's why I did it. I'm learning. <laughs> See that? Last, I, I like it. I like it. Last year, they were the seven seed. They finished 42 and 30. And as we just talked about, they had a lot of injuries. Anthony Davis, Anthony Street Clothes Davis. Oh my um, God. Hurt all the time last season after finally surprising people the season before when they won the championship that he actually played all the way through. Um, back injured again. They had a lot of injuries, actually, including LeBron, who looked like when he finally got hurt that Father Time was finally catching up at some point. Um, but now, those two still come back. You got Russ. You got Carmelo. You got um, Trevor Ariza. Trevor Ariza's there. Dwight Howard. Dwight Howard's back. Ray John Ray Ellington. Ray DeAndre Ellington. Ray John Rondo. DeAndre Jordan. This is like I the mean, 2016 USA basketball roster. <laughs> Minus the guys on the net. If Rondo, this, if who's this about was 100. Like, if this was like five years ago, this team would be literally an all-star team. They also have, oh yeah, they have um, Malik, Monk. Uh, Malik Monk, Kendrick Alan Nunn, Horton Tucker, Horton Tucker's still there, and Ken. Oh, thank Bazer. God, he. Oh, you're thank... forgetting one guy. You're forgetting one guy. Who? Mac McClung, the pride of Gate uh-huh. City, Virginia. He was committed to Rutgers and ended up going to West Virginia, and then Texas. Oh, my State. God. And then George, well, Georgetown was first. Then Georgetown, and then Texas Tech. The guys, guys we'll talk about the NBA. We're talking about prof- <laughs> we're talking about basketball that matters. But he he proves that white men can jump. He might be the only one, but he proves it. That's racist, but, man. It's not racist. But it's first racist. off, it's a, if we're it's if we're gonna compare, Alex Caruso should have like it's the Lakers' big mistake for letting Caruso go for McClung. Well, I mean, they're similar players. But no, no, not. it's Caruso. It's McClung. Yeah, and, and, and you, you read my mind right there because that's the one thing that I was going to bring up. And I was going to say, thank God they got Taylor Horton Tucker back. But that, that Alex Caruso loss is going to be really detrimental to them in, in, in certain ways. You know what I mean? Luckily, they have Kendrick Nunn who can kind of fill some of that void. But that... Alex Caruso is going to be, uh, you know, a TJ McConnell type player to where he can, he's great off the bench. He's a good spot start and they're losing that. And honestly, I don't know how durable, like Rondo, like they sign Rondo, like, okay, whatever. But Russ, I mean, Russ is a machine, so he's going to be fine. Um, it's not really him that, that worries you. It's, it's the, their shooting, their, their depth at shooting guard is kind of garbage at the moment. So true. They're gonna Honestly, have to their that defense out. is kind of garbage too, especially if Anthony Davis isn't playing all the time. Street close. So there'll be yeah. about 56 games out of the year where their defense will be garbage then. <laughs> exactly. I mean, because I'm looking at this 
this roster. And I mean, yes, Dwight Howard used to be a defensive player of the year, but after watching him over the last couple of seasons, he has a, he plays a very high level of defense for about five minutes. And then after him, I mean, who else is going to be like your defensive minded players? Is it like Baysmore, uh, Ariza and Kendrick Nunn? Is that like your defensive minded players that are going to even play? I mean, Kendrick Nunn isn't even a defensive minded guy, but all I could think of is Baysmore and Ariza. Even Rondo's defense at this point is pretty overrated. This is going to be interesting to watch for sure. Even though everybody's going to look at paper and they're going to be like, the Lakers are fantastic. Are they going to win the West? And we're going to hear about that. And I'm going to throw up when I, when I hear about this all the time, because everybody's like, the Lakers, can they win the championship finally? For one, they won the title on a bubble. That does not count. There was, that does not count. Um, Anthony Davis is not going to stay healthy. I think LeBron's going to take a step down. Dwight Howard, how many times has this guy been on the Lakers? This is the third time now. I mean, they didn't want you twice. Now you come crawling back. <laughs> I mean, you're he, what a desperate guy he is. He'll go anywhere. And now a washed up DeAndre Jordan. Whoa, whoa, whoa. <sighs> you kidding me? We had to yeah. give up four second round picks to get rid of him. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Oh God! I mean, you guys, fun fact: Do you guys know DeAndre Jordan's real first name? I do not. Highland. I would have never guessed that. Here's my here's my thing with the Lakers too. Say this this roster makeup doesn't get it done. You don't win the championship. Where are is like your team going for the next? 10 years because when i'm looking at it dwight how this is years in the league 17 9 13 15 18 13 9 17 12 18 there's like i see three not counting the two-way players I see three people on this team that have less than five years experience, meaning if they don't get it done now, there's nowhere close to a good probability. They get it done a year from now, two years from now, three years from now, and they're paying a lot of money for this roster. I honestly thought those numbers you were throwing out were the, the, the amount of games that Anthony Davis was going to play and how many minutes he was going to play in each game. <laughs> I mean, I could double for that, too. <laughs> this roster is garbage. You know, what I, you know what I find hilarious about this roster, though? Looking at, what? like, if you look at the roster, like, all right, take out the veterans, right? Mm-hmm. So... And take out, you know, and, and that includes Nunn and Malik Monk. Austin Reeves, Chondi Brown, Mac McClung, Joel uh, AIE, and, uh, and Horton Tucker is the only exception here. Every time LeBron is on a team, the guys that they pick up or draft out of the college ranks, it's never one of those guys who's like 19 years old and he's a project and he's three, three years away. It's always these guys that excel that's as like juniors and seniors in college and don't translate to the NBA every single time. It's like Shabazz Napier. Like that's what, that's the only reason they have guys like Joel AIE and Sean D. Brown. Napier had some good games for the, for the Nets. So yeah, but but you know what I'm trying to say? Like that's, it's, that's how you know LeBron's running the team because LeBron's not watching, you know, uh, Northwest Missouri State f- finding a kid a diamond in the rough. He if he turns on college basketball, he's watching you know Gonzaga versus Michigan. Yeah, but here's the difference with that. Were you done? Sorry. Yeah, I was done. Okay, here's the difference though. LeBron James is how old now? Thirty six. Yeah. Yeah, mm-hmm. he can't pull. He can't be playing every possession and have a usage usage rate of one hundred seventy two. I mean, he's old. Things. I mean, it, he's, he's starting. Almost as old as you. Almost. 
I mean, LeBron's had a groin strain, I think, for the past three years. He's He was literally <laughs> on the injury list every year, every single game of the groin strain. The ankle injury, I mean, he's – he's and, I mean, it's expected. The guy's been just doing so much for so many years. I mean, he's one of the best players that will ever play. We'll never see anything like it again for – at least for a really, really, really long time. But his age, I mean, this is – Things are catching up to him. And if Anthony Davis could stay healthy, then I could say, okay, they might be all right because the time you can rest LeBron, maybe Anthony Davis could pick it up. And he can't either. So Russell Westbrook, it's all you, man. And he's Russell Westbrook has done, has done well by himself on a lot of teams. So that's the only thing that's going to be helping him. My, my thing is you're going to have to rest. Like you got – a good like what six guys one two three four five six seven eight guys north of 30 and they're all probably gonna be having to have some rest days unless it's like wayne ellington who's really not who's probably not going to be playing that many minutes all the time but especially on the games you have to rest Anthony Davis and LeBron, or if God forbid, both of them get hurt, then you're the, the whole team being led by Russell Westbrook is going to be like Westbrook, Carmelo, Rondo. Like the, the floor is going to be all bunched up which it might be in general as it is because none of these guys are that great of three point shooters other than like Wayne Ellington. And uh, I guess you could throw like Malik Monk or Kent Bazemore in there. Um, I mean, for a power forward, Anthony Davis can shoot well enough. He can. Yes. But at the same time, it's like all these guys are going to be occupying close to the same part of the court. I want to see how the offense is going to even flow because A lot of the time, LeBron always brings in like one or two elite shooters or not even like the elite of the elite, but just the under the radar ones that are shooting like right above 40 percent, like the Danny Greens or the Caldwell Popes. Like those kinds of players are the ones that he usually gets that'll be a shooter. But I don't see any of them on this team other than maybe Wayne Ellington. But again, I don't think Wayne Ellington's going to be playing that many minutes. He should have called uh, Mike Miller and Kyle Corver and see what they're up to. Uh, or J.J. Redick right before he retired today. You know who I think is going to fill in as that uh, shooter role for them, and this is going to kind of surprise <clears throat> you, I think, a little bit? Oh, God, who? Malik Monk. I thought you were going to come up with some sort three of last year. <laughs> He shot 40% from three, uh, averaged almost 12 a game. I mean, he's he's, he's not a star or anything, but – it was the best shooting career year of his career playing with LaMelo. So maybe, you know, if he has a guy like LeBron setting him up, you're going to see those shooting percentages continue to be north of 40%. Um, every other year was 34% or lower. So it might, it might've been a one year, you know, abnormality for him, but he could be that. I think that might be the, the role they want to put him in. And I did miss Kendrick Nunn. Nunn is a decent shooter. Better than any of the guys in the Bulls. <laughs> uh that's a that's another don't, don't go there don't go there <laughs> a bull the bulls right now are 10 times better than this garbage oh you're gonna see lots of ball all star oh i could see yeah, it we'll see. i could see it all right so let's move on to the you other want to talk team. about the you want to talk about the the clippers now How i was just about to guy? say Let's yeah, go let's, to the other get, LA team. Let's get this over with. <laughs> so I think it was one of the other episodes, Dennis, you said you told us something that we didn't know that Kawhi is probably not playing this year or at least a bulk of this year. Um, That's true. So last year they finished second in the division, fourth overall, 47 and 25. Um you know, a lot of the same roster they had from the season before, except they swapped coaches. They now have uh, Tyrone Liu instead of Doc Rivers. They got to the conference finals. Kawhi got hurt, though. They lost to Phoenix. Um, there was I a lot of times in the playoffs. Though, they... Go ahead. Go ahead. All right. Sorry. I'm sorry. I'm just. 
you're good. I do. I do want to say that it was a couple months ago. I was saying that there was a chance that it was pretty much known that there was a chance that Kawhi may not play this season. Right. And you guys were talking to me like I'm stupid. But now what's the latest update coming out? Okay, we signed him for four years, but it might be a Kevin Durant scenario where he only plays three years out of the contract. Right. Am I right? Most of the time, what you do say is stupid. So, (laughs) But you were right. But, you know, a, a, a broken clock is right twice a day. Okay, anyways, I'm not even going to, I'm not, I know what he's doing. I'm not going there. I'm going to be nice to him. <laughs> okay. Um, but so, yeah, I mean, there, there's a, a bunch of different times in the playoffs that they obviously looked like they should. They looked like a good team with Kawhi playing on all cylinders. But then there was a bunch of times that they just didn't look that great. And if you're depending on Paul George to be your number one guy to bring you to a championship, that is a mistake because it's not going to happen. Um, I'm probably, I'm not going to say I'm a Paul George hater because I like watching him play, but I just don't think he's of the caliber to take your team to a championship. Um, but oh, but he'll bitch and complain all the time about how people you know don't give him respect but then when he gets in the playoffs he's shooting 25 percent from behind three point line and just totally you know uh not doing anything but yet he'll be the first one uh, to say you know how you know I'm, I'm not getting any respect and things like that it's like bro you suck at the playoffs exactly and then on top of that you have the people who are like his biggest fan saying, well, look at these last playoffs. He was shooting well. He was playing well. And it's like, cool. He played well. What did that get you? That didn't get you anything. Right. That got you a Western conference finals trip. Then you got bounced. So like, right. <laughs> even then it didn't do much. And this year, especially if Kawhi is not playing, I see a lot of the same. I, I, I mean, I definitely don't see them finishing fourth in the West. If Kawhi is not playing, if, there's if no it, if, if the Kawhi is not Kawhi is not playing this year. Well, I'm just saying, barring any crazy thing that they're like, oh my god, he's coming back. He's fast. He's uh, recovering faster than expected. Barring that, I don't think. I think they will make the play-in tournament. I think that's where they're going to finish. I think they're going to finish seventh or eighth seed in the West, and I think they're going to be in the play. Nope, they're not even going. I don't think they're coming. The, I don't think they're going to make the playoffs this year. I mean, Not look at, at their all. roster. Outside of Paul George, what do you got? You got, but like veteran wise, you got Batum and Blood, so they can't carry anything. Abaka, he's old, too old now. Reggie Jackson is a joke. You got Luke Kennard, he's not doing anything. Terrence Mann had one game in the playoffs. Marcus Morris, he's like a energy enforcer guy at this point. Thank and God. He, and yeah, I'm sorry. Like I like Brandon Boston, but he's not doing like anything special as a rookie. Uh, right. It's this, you know, Jason Preston isn't. He's like there's nothing on this team outside of Paul George, and like you said, Paul George is not. Paul George is looked at by some and and thinks he's better than he actually is. He had I, one dominant year in in Oklahoma City where he averaged 28 points a game, and he had a bunch of years where like he was. Starting to get better, get better, get better. And then he had that leg injury and he got, you know, back to where he was, but he never like made that leap to like superstar. He never made that leap to like Kevin Durant, LeBron James, Luca level, Giannis level. He he he's below that. He's a tier or two tiers below that, but he's paid like he's in their tier. Um he's not gonna carry this team to 45 wins. I, I if Kawhi doesn't now they say Kawhi. I just saw Bomber thinks Kawhi's going to be back mid-season. If yeah, Kawhi comes back, maybe they get hot and they make it, you know, like you said, into the playing tournament. But if, if he's if he's not healthy, I, I, I could see them maybe sneaking into that playing tournament because I and now I do remember it as 10, you know, the 10th and 9th seed. But, yeah, yeah, somewhere around there is probably their, their highest upside with if everything goes right. And I, no will, Kawhi. I will say this real quick. I think Paul George's best – best playing time was when he was on the Pacers and he pushed that LeBron heat team to the edge. Yeah. Ever since then, I, I don't think he's ever reaching that level again. 
I think that was his peak, and he's not getting back there again. There's, you know, like uh, what's going to happen? The, the the Clippers are the only way they're going to make the postseason is by making it there in the playing tournament. All right, but other than that, this is going to be a complete garbage team. There is nothing good going on. Zubats is always hurt. Ibaka's can't even walk anymore. Uh, Bledsoe is just Bledsoe, Bledsoe's a train wreck. And thank God they have Reggie Jackson because he's the only the only hope that they have. Uh, Terrence Mann is you know, but other than that, this team's garbage. This team's worse than the Lakers by this far. Team is like Dennis playing two K. He gets beat by thirty. <laughs> Uh, the funny thing is i was looking at this team I and i was like tell anybody about that <laughs> <laughs> and i was like this is this is like the uh if there was an all street clothes team without without us actually putting one together it would be the clippers i mean you have batum who was hurt a lot abaka who's hurt a lot Kawhi who's hurt a lot um you even well, got Batum's- zubak canard hey, but- but Giles. Jim's credit though he's about a hundred, so true. I mean, so is Abaka at this point. But <laughs> I mean, this team it it really is just hurt all the time. So uh, yeah, I, like making the play in tournament, I think is their best case scenario at like the seven or eight seed. I think that's their best case scenario. Ka- Kawhi is his his days are over man the guys the guy can't stay healthy the clippers suck they're not gonna do anything this year i'd be surprised if they made the playoffs Kawhi's not gonna come back even if he is healthy the clippers are gonna be in such a bad position from a record standpoint that they're not even gonna what's the sense of putting them back on the floor you know what i mean so the the, the, the likelihood that Kawhi is 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 going to make it back to the fourth is is zero and they need to move and look toward the the following year get Kawhi healthy again hopefully stays healthy and and that's it can we move on yep <laughs> like, I was gonna say speaking of injuries let's talk about a team that's up. getting healthier so Golden State obviously we know Clay Thompson's been out the last couple seasons a lot of bad luck with him, his injuries happening. They still finished 39 and 33. They got an eight seed. They got into the play in tournament. Steph Curry looked like his normal Steph Curry self um, was an MVP candidate. I mean, not much more better things you could say about Steph Curry last season. Um, but this year they get a top draft pick. So they're bringing in Kaminga, as we talked about his nickname, the cum bucket. Um, we have <laughs> Otto, Otto Porter. <laughs> we have Andrew Wiggins still there. Clay Thompson, hopefully healthy at some point. James Wiseman, Draymond Green, Andre Iguodala's back. Um, you guys at least know where Kaminga's nickname comes from. Hey, this is a, this is a family show. I understand that, but do you at least know what they're referencing? And now I, I it's. Alex, isn't it, the chum, isn't it the chum bucket? Yeah, from SpongeBob. Okay, yeah. So how do they get cum bucket out of that? His last name is Kuminga, K-U-M. K-U-M. <laughs> yeah. Just very so, unfortunate. <laughs> god. Oh god. And I thought, but anyway, I thought it, I thought when people called me fatso in school that that was bad. <laughs> That's a whole new level. <laughs> Imagine being a cum bucket. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. But um, I, I think Golden State is going to be a lot better this year than they were last year, especially if Clay Thompson can get back at some point. Right now, he's on track to return, they say, sometime in the early part of this coming season. Um, so they uh... – Not exactly – clear on that time frame but that's what the latest report is so a report a couple months ago said he's going to be back by christmas the the matchup with the Suns that he would be 
that was the target date. Now he's okay. been progressing well in rehab. He's moving along faster than they than they actually thought he was. So there's a chance that actually he could be back faster and sooner than originally anticipated. If if Clay makes it back, uh, this is going to be this going to be that's going to be the game changer right there. I didn't know we booked uh, Dennis Wojanowski to come on the show with his uh, injury insight. Hell yeah, it's a Dennis bomb. Or a water ice bomb? Water ice bomb. bomb. So a rainbow water ice bomb. (laughs) (laughs) Um, I mean, so when you you think about it, though, if if you see this happen, I want all this stuff to happen. So mark my words, Kawhi's not playing this year. And Clay could be... If Clay is back in november thanksgiving i wouldn't be surprised i thought the season doesn't the season not start until december or is that october oh this is come on, man. i'm sorry the come past on, man. Uh, i'm sorry i got mixed up it, it was 20 the last season didn't start until like december yeah i mean what, this what's the back next to like thing the normal timings us? all right i mean I'm what's down. the next thing you're gonna tell us that higher defensive ratings are better <laughs> No, I, I, I'm actually excited to see this uh, Warriors team because I love the like young guys that they have. Wiseman, oh, I, I think Wiseman will develop to be a good. Will you stop, dude? <laughs> All right, Wiseman. I think Wiseman is Chris Bosh. I think he's got that kind of upside. It's gonna take. He, he didn't. He played three games of college. Like, give the guy, you know, and then he walks into a COVID year. So give the guy a break. Let him develop. He's in a he's in a good situation. You got Moses Moody, who I forgot who it was, couldn't say his name at the draft. Uh, oh, Kendrick Perkins. And oh, yeah. they also brought in um, – who's the other guy they brought in? Uh, where is – I just saw it. Um, Rookie-wise? Oh, Jonathan Kaminga. Sorry. So you yeah. got you got Kaminga and Moody, two guys that are long, active, can score, defend, like play all over the place. And then you got Clay, you know, the Splash Brothers, you got Wiseman, you got Draymond, Igadala, you got Otto Porter, who may or may not be Walt Chamberlain's descendant. Um, I, I think this team, if, if health serves them right and the, the right guys progress and the rookies don't fall flat on their face, which I don't think they will, this is a team that they'll probably end up middle of the road in the Western Conference, five, six seed, but they're going to be dangerous. I mean, you got Steph Curry, you got one of the best players in the league still, on your team, this team can contend with any team in the in in the West, and wouldn't be you know wouldn't be surprised to see if they make a conference finals. I'm not betting on it, but if things go right for them, this team has the makeup to be back to what we're used to seeing the Warriors be from years past. Oh yeah, I agree. And it's going to disagree the... with me because he hates James Wiseman, but <laughs> but I think that I don't even like, mention especially... it. Wigan. Yeah, true. And especially if they have the starting five, like say they have their normal starting five of like Curry, Clay, Wiggins, Draymond, Wiseman. I really like the bench lineups that you can uh, work with. Like you still have Otto Porter. Um, You still have Michael Mulder gave you some decent minutes last year and even still having Moody, um, Iguodala, Toscano Anderson. I like some of the things I saw from him. Jordan Poole. I liked his scoring off the bench too. Uh, Kavon Looney off the bench as a as a backup big man, and then Kaminga as well. I mean, that's a lot of good players you have in other roles that will especially give you the depth going into the playoffs. And you can, especially with the younger guys, the rookies, you can work them out to see which ones even want you would want to have in your playoff rotation come playoff time, or you could even package them, let, let them showcase their skills throughout the regular season, package them to get another, you know, fringe, like sixth man kind of player uh, later on in the season, right before the trade deadline. So they have a lot of uh, options and I just like the prospects of the team itself. Dennis. Hi. What do you think? So last season, Steph Curry actually averaged 32 points a game, which is the best he's ever played in his entire career. I mean, the guy was a monster. He shot uh, 
42 percent from from three i mean the guy is the, the guy is crazy i mean he's he could you if you made the case that steph curry is the best player in the league i mean you could literally make the case for that and and you you could argue but i mean he's he could he could be classified as the best player in the league right now so really what it's all going to come down to i think it can draymond green stay healthy can he return to some semblance of what he was a couple of years ago andrew wiggins i mean he's not a guy who's going to be a a top scoring option but he's a dependable player he's been playing consistently for many years he's they he was expected back in the day to be a player who was going to be super great but i mean if he is what he is playing on a team that he is now i mean he, he's had a pretty solid career up to this point uh wiseman he could be back by you know sometime in november december january whatever however he progresses um so really it might be a rocky road to get into the postseason for the warriors but this is if they're healthy this is not a team that you want to see in the postseason. I guarantee that because they all they need to do is get the postseason. If you if you make the postseason, you have a healthy Clay, you have a healthy Steph, you have James Wiseman back, who's going to contribute um, along with Looney. I mean, Looney's not a slouch either. So you have all of these players who Otto Porter. If Otto Porter stays healthy, I mean, the guy's not a bad. He, he's had some pretty productive seasons too. And the only reason why his stock has dropped lately is because of his health over the last couple of years. I think he had a foot injury. But if this is a team that makes the postseason, you're, you don't want to see the Warriors in the postseason, especially if, if Clay's back, Steph is back, Wiseman's back, and these guys are healthy. You don't want to see them. Yep, I completely – and especially because I think Wiggins – can be a better version of Harrison Barnes in those championship teams that the Warriors had pre Kevin Durant. I think Wiggins can definitely do that. So that makes the team even more deadly. I mean, I just feel like uh, Wiggins over the years has had all this pressure on him and what coming into the league, he had this ceiling that he was going to be an elite player and obviously he's, fallen short of that but his consistency over the years says more in some ways than him actually being an, an elite level for at least a couple of years he's been decent more than decent when he's in minnesota he's played well in golden state so you gotta the guy is a good player yeah he's a solid starter everyone just thought he was going to be a star because he was drafted the same time as joel and bead a lot of the the fight was like, do we go with Wiggins or Embiid? So there was a lot of uh, arguments there back during that draft, and that, that was just his expectations. But um, moving on to the last team, you talked about depressing. I mean, this is about as depressing as it gets, especially if you're a fan of the team. Sacramento, 12th in the West, 31 and 41 last season. So, I mean, not awful. Um, but again, I don't even remember the last time they were in the playoffs. Uh, it's definitely been a while. They at least have some very exciting young players. Um, and real quick, the last time in the playoffs was 05, 06 season. Um, I mean, De'Aaron Fox, love De'Aaron Fox. One of my favorite players to watch. Uh, they also brought in Halliburton last year, who was a very, very good player. Rashawn Holmes, near and dear to my heart as a process sixer, has gotten much better over the years. Um, Buddy Heald and Harrison Barnes haven't exactly gotten up to what they were supposed to be. But again, this team brings back a lot of the same guys. They brought in Tristan Thompson. Um they drafted Davion Mitchell, who I think is going to be very good for them, at least has a very good mentality and hustle and heart about him. Um, but I mean, I see pretty much the same thing happening unless something happens. And the one thing that they've been tied to is a deal with Ben Simmons. We're not going to get into Ben Simmons because I know that that could go off the rails, but they've been tied to him. Why? What I about don't... him? I never, I, I don't know what's going on with him. Uh, that joke. Sacramento has 
Yeah, I know, I know. I was just... Oh, I was about to say, I was like, you haven't heard Sacramento? But um, so even if they make a trade for Ben Simmons, I still see much of the same because the team around him and are in Sacramento isn't that good, especially if you're facing the West the whole time. So I kind of see them finishing exactly where they finished this year. I see like a between a 30 to 33 win total and like a 12th, 11th seed. I mean, I just don't see them doing like much better. And I don't see them being the very last place in the division or the conference. Um, I don't think they'll be the last place in the conference. But as Dennis will always say, the Sacramento Kings are like two years away from being two years away. That, that just seems to be their issue. Uh, I like the Davion Mitchell pick. Um, the weird thing about him, though, is he's actually older than both Tyrese Halliburton and Marvin Bagley. Like, it's funny because he obviously played three years in college, but, like, to think he's actually still older than a guy like Marvin Bagley is just – weird to me because it feels like Bagley's been in the year league for a lot of years. They have a lot of good young guys. I love De'Aaron Fox. He, to me, is that next breakout point guard. Like, he's going to be the next – I'm not saying they're the same type of player, but in terms of, like, a breakout, he's – I think he's going to be like, you know, Jamal Murray was. Um, I just don't think they have enough horses. Buddy Heald is great, but – it just hasn't come together. They don't have, they have the guard play. They, the, Halliburton, Heald, Fox, Mitchell, but do they have, they don't have any guys down low. Tristan Thompson's, you know, 30, 30 now. Yeah. Harrison Barnes is a veteran. Fine. But like Rashawn Holmes, Alex Lynn, Mar- Mo Harkless, like they don't, they don't got any go-to big men that you could really rely on. And that's where their downfall is. Um, so do I think they're going to be they're going to be last place in the division? But I don't. Think, I think they'll be like a 11, 12 seed in the Western Conference. I don't foresee the Clippers being better than the Kings are. I think the big thing for the Kings are going to be health. Is is Bagley going to be healthy this season? If Probably. he is, well, <laughs> that's that's what I mean. It all comes down to health. So if, if Bagley's had some pretty damn good games since he's been in the league but his problem is he just can't stay healthy so uh buddy healed has been better than people give him credit for he's a he's a pretty good he's a pretty good player i mean he had his second best season scoring wise since he's been in the league halliburton's great he's he had that knee injury so i don't know how limited he'll be coming back uh De'Aaron fox is 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 on my list of guys who are gonna be an all-star this season so the Fox had a fantastic year last year. And I think he um, definitely made that breakout season last year. And he's right there now with a guy that you, you need to put some respect on his name because he's a fantastic player. Uh, Holmes is a good player. They just signed him. So they have good players coaching. I don't know if Luke Walton is the best guy who should be coaching a team. I mean, he hasn't been the best coach over the years. He's kind of garbage to be honest with you. Um, in his defense, when he was with the Lakers, they kind of had a crappy team, so you can't really count that against him. But he has better pieces. He's got some good pieces. He's got better pieces in Sacramento than a lot of other coaches will, and he still can't do anything with them. So, uh, but I don't, I don't foresee the Clippers being worse or better than the than the kings are i mean i think they're they'll be around the same i think the Kings could surprise people i think the the king the kings are always on that cusp they're just uh the the year before last they were a team that was kind of on a roll heading toward the postseason i thought they were going to make the postseason and they didn't they're a pain in the ass when you play against them so they're they're a team that can be a pain in the ass for teams because they have those games where they could just play like a great team and then they have those games where they're just complete shit so if they could find some consistency and luke walton can actually guide them to being the team that they're capable of then this is a team that could make the playoffs I mean, I would five years. (laughs) 
I wouldn't be surprised if they made like a 10 seed and got into the play. But I don't see them getting any higher than a 10 seed. I mean, I don't I don't see I don't think the the Spurs are better. I don't think the Pelicans are better. The Rockets certainly are better. The Thunder aren't better. I think they're just right up there with the Timberwolves. So, I mean, there's a lot of teams that aren't better than they are, at least on paper. Yeah, no, I mean, I, I, I definitely agree with that too, but I also think, I don't know, that it just doesn't seem like the team ever clicks together at the same time enough to make, to, to, to take them anywhere. I mean, it definitely is possible that that could happen, but I also agree with your point that I don't think Walton is the one to do it. So I think it, like you said, it depends on health. It depends if Bagley turns into the, the guy that they hoped he would be. Um, and then it also depends on if some of these other guys can step up and, and start making a leap that will actually help um, push the team along. Like we know Darren Fox is a guy who's going to make more leaps and bounds and grow more. Um, Halliburton I'm sure will do the same but I don't see a guy like Buddy Heald getting that much better than what he already is I don't see um, like Rashawn Holmes now he's gotten way better since when he first came into the league but at this point I don't see him getting much better than where he is now so there's just like I think that the Kings need to get to another level to really be a true playoff contending team and I don't think that the way the roster is made up right now is the way that it'll happen. I think they have to add at least like one more player. That's the caliber of De'Aaron Fox and preferably a wing player. Yeah, but I don't think, uh, I don't think Buddy Heal needs to get better. I mean, it's the other players around him who need to get better. I mean, Buddy Heal last season averaged Agreed. over nearly 17 points a game. He shot almost 40% from three. So he doesn't really need to get any better. I mean, that's, he's, he's, he's capped where he's at. I don't, he's not going to get any better, but that's okay because that's still pretty damn good production. It's the other guys like Halliburton. It's Bagley. It's those guys are going to be crucial in the success of the Sacramento Kings. Agreed. And it's the, the only reason I say that about, um healed is just that right now he's technically their second option i don't i don't think he is good enough to be the second option as a third option perfect but someone else needs to step up to be the second option because we all know De'Aaron fox is the first so it, you need that second and then buddy healed is perfectly fine to play that third option role to me well honestly like and I know we weren't going to talk about this, but I know honestly, if they're thinking that Ben Simmons is somebody who can, and I, that would be a team that he doesn't fit well in because he's not, he's not capable of being a number two. You know, he, he supplements a lot of, in a lot of ways, but that is, that is somewhere that he shouldn't go. I don't think that would be helpful to them at all. Agreed. And I, I honestly, I think that's the only reason why a uh, deal with them hasn't been made because I know the Sixers uh, either wanted Halliburton and Heald or Fox and Sacramento was not about to do that. I would never trade Fox in a million years. I wouldn't either. So what about for Kyrie? I would take that right now. <laughs> well, obviously, if you're on the receiving end. <laughs> What, I'm sorry, what about for Ben Simmons? Oh, I guess we probably, we just answered that. I'm sorry. It's okay. I was trying to get <laughs> Dennis all riled up. It's not going to work. He's, he's laser focused today. <laughs> but um, I think that's it for us, unless you guys got anything else. No, because talking about the, that Pacific Division was – that was awful. I never want to do that again. <laughs> Especially the Lakers. I get it. Yeah. I, oh God. That was, that was, that was bad. I, I, I hate all those teams in there. I, the Kings are probably my favorite team. Out of the, the Kings I like, 
It's the rest of the other teams I can't stand. <laughs> Annoying. Understandable. No, the Suns are all right. I like the Suns. True. The Suns and four guy. I mean, he's cool. You know, I tried to get that dude to like respond to my DMs, man. You could have been on our podcast. He's Mr. Hollywood. If he finally not, responds, he's still welcome on anytime. Yeah, come on, man. He knocks a guy out. All of a sudden, he's, he's, he's at you. Come on the podcast. I <laughs> We were talking about him before he was, you know, he kicked that guy's ass. And we were talking about getting him on the podcast. And then he blows up. He's too big for it's too Hollywood for us. I know. The shame, shame. <laughs> but. That is it for us. Thank you, everybody, for listening to another episode of The Atlantic Files. Make sure you guys like, subscribe, leave a review, comment. Helps us in every platform, so make sure you do that real quick. Takes five seconds. Just do that right now. As they're doing it, their hand signals, you could be doing that at the same time. So thank you, everybody, for listening to another episode to the number one podcast, number one division in the NBA, brought to you by the Underdog Sports Podcast Network. Thank you, guys, and we'll catch you guys next week. Peace.